Hey everybody, it's another episode of TJ's Garage. Um, today we're going to be doing the Kuriakin heel shifter for a 2019 Indian Roadmaster. All right, so this is what comes in the box. This is the actual lever for the heel shifter. And if you look down here, this is what you're going to be getting in the box. All these bolts, two spacers, and this peg is actually a Polaris part number. And there's the part number. You can probably want to write that down. And this kit, if you decide you're going to do this, and here's the kit right here. That's the number. Okay. And the reason I'm telling you about this peg, the actual peg, because it's not universal. Okay. You can't just go in and buy a chrome shift lever or a shift peg from any manufacturer. Polaris is metric. That would fit, that's what fits on this uh, heel shifter. It has to be metric thread. That's why I went with the stock Polaris bumper, which is the same one that's on the front of the toe shifter. It's going to go on the heel shifter. So we went through the directions and I took everything apart already. So everything's going to come off real easy and I'm going to go through step by step. It's pretty easy, pretty fast. Um, I've lined up a few tools over here to make it a little faster. You don't need all this, but I'll tell you what it is and why I'm using it once I take the floorboard apart. Okay, so what they're telling you in the direction is take the shift linkage off at the rear. The shift linkage is down here and it's held on by a 10 millimeter bolt. So if you look down here, here's your rear shift linkage. 10 millimeter bolt, bolt. it's already loosened. You're gonna take this off, okay? Now, you're going to take your ratchet and there's two mounting bolts, two mounting bolts for the complete floorboard assembly, which they tell you to take apart, which is right here. There's two. Okay. You got one here and you got one here. You're going to have to manipulate the shift lever to get to the bolt. But since they're loose, it's going to come off real easy. If you look here and take the bottom one. Right. Support the floorboard when you take the top one off. And there you have it. Now, come over here. you got your complete floorboard assembly with the shift rod. Now set that aside. Okay. Now if you look, the stock bolts that held the floorboard on are way shorter. Than the new bolts and there's a reason for that okay you're going to be using these spacers to space the floorboard from the frame but first what we're going to do is we're going to put the shift linkage on okay shift linkage goes in front of the toe shifter and it'll tell you in the directions it goes closest to the floorboard okay and it goes like this now if you look one of the holes is larger for an adjustment what I found from putting it on just now is I set the position of the heel shifter as low as possible for clearance purposes. Okay, so real quick is what we'll do. We'll put this on. You take your two chrome screws that come in the kit with your washer and the Loctite on there. Come from the back. Okay, you can thread them on. Okay, there's one, and here's two. Now once you get them threaded on, you're gonna have to tighten them up. And like I said, I leave the one in the lowest position possible. All right. So, there you have it. Now, if you see, you could tell how this pivots. There's play in the bottom, so it is adjustable. The bottom, is adjustable so what I do is I set it as low as possible there's your low point because you're going to manipulate and adjust this linkage accordingly when you're done so right now I'm just going to tighten these up in the lowest position possible very simple it's not hard anybody can do this nothing to be afraid of here Okay. 
And there again is your lowest position. If you see the pivot point, you can see it's going as low as possible. I'm going to tighten that one up. And the top one. And I'm going to tell you what size you're going to be using. There's your tightening. Tighten the top one. And we're using a 5 millimeter hex head socket. Okay? Give them one more snug. One, two. All right? Now, you have to loosen the bolt on the eye bolt here for your shift linkage. The reverse threads. This is lefty loosey righty tighty is this one. This is the opposite. This is reverse threads and they will tell you in the directions. This is standard thread, lefty loosey righty tighty. This is opposite. And the reason you're loosening this is to set your height and your adjustment for your heel shifter. So as we put this on, we're gonna take the new bolts that we got in the kit, go through the floorboard, okay? If you hold those in, you take your spacers, they come in the kit, put them between here. So it's going to go between the frame and the floorboard. Okay? Now we're going to put this on with the spacers. I'm going to make sure that this shift linkage stays up so it doesn't get jammed up when we're threading on the floorboard. So you're going to put this on. Turn this up. Make sure you don't cross thread this. Realistically, you shouldn't be doing this with a ratchet because if you cross thread it, you're going to be in a bad way. But I've done this a couple times already, so. All right, don't forget your other spacer for the bottom bolt. And this is what, hold on there, guys. Put it on here. Slide it up on the frame. On your spot, thread it on. Okay, now we'll snug it up. We're not going to tighten it. Okay. All right. Now, as you see, your linkage is sitting down here. So, if you take your 10 millimeter bolt that you removed in the first place and you loosen this up, the actual eye bolt is a 10 millimeter. This is a 7 16 Thread it through, and you can see, just start a couple threads, and you'll see exactly the height of your heel shifter. Okay? If you look here, you'll see that we have clearance. It's not hitting the floorboard. Okay? That's what you're looking for. So I already adjusted my eye bolt down here out two turns to get this height and the clearance. And you're going to take your stock foot peg. If you look, they're both the same. But like I said, it has to be the Polaris part number or a metric part number or it's not going to fit. It's already got Loctite on it. And you're going to thread it on. And you're ready to go. Now, just for reference, these lower bolts, this was an 8 millimeter metric hex head socket, okay? It's very simple. The whole situation should take you 15 minutes. The only thing you'll have to adjust, you might want to adjust the height of your heel shifter, depending on how high you want your heel to be. And to make sure that there's no binding between the actual arm linkage or the arm itself and the floorboard. As you can see here, if you look underneath, there's plenty of clearance. It's not hitting anything, so we'll tighten up our two, bolt, two bolts here, and we'll be back on the road. And I know this video may be a little sketchy, but it's pretty simple. It's not hard. It's just the, the linkages. Make sure you tighten up your set screw. Once you get your adjustment on there, your 7 16 set, set screw, uh, set your height. Make sure there's nothing impeding your, your shifting. Make sure nothing's you know, rubbing up against each other. It's not going to hit the case. As long as you put those spacers on those lower bolts, you will not hit the case. So make sure you got those spacers between the bolt and the frame. 
but you can see them right there both in the frame okay very simple very fast very easy it's not scary it doesn't take a lot it doesn't take long the directions make it seem a little intimidating because those the way they write uh, directions makes everything confusing, but it's very simple. Literally 15 minutes. Um, you'll get your 7 16 and 10 millimeter. This is what you're going to use for your shift linkage. Okay. This is the lock nut. This is the actual bolt that holds on the shift linkage. And then your 5 and your 8 millimeter, which is here and here. And this is what you should end up with. And again, here's the part number. For the shift peg and here is the part number for the kit okay um, next week we'll be doing something on a Chevy Silverado uh, this is a really bad situation I put on a B&M aluminum pan um, it holds an additional two quarts so it's like a total of seven and a half quarts of oil for towing and this was supposed to be foolproof and I put it on about a year ago and I couldn't figure out why I get this leak underneath well between two gaskets and a lot of curse words I figured out that in this mold on the other pan underneath and I'll show you when we do it there's a slight blemish the size of a pinhead and the oil is actually seeping through the aluminum, through that pinhead, and causing that leak. So next week we'll be doing that. I'll show you the kit, the part numbers, and everything. If you have any questions about the Indian, uh, the floorboards, the floorboard inserts, we've done a video on that. Um, that's really about it. Uh, we just got back from Deadwood, South Dakota yesterday. We did around 2,300 miles. The Indian... It's flawless, absolutely perfect, not a problem. Uh, if you have any questions, just send me a message and I'll get right back to you. Thanks.